This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Everything's 3D horror bit today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, we used to just uh, get our old TV set, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that false colorization law through in the 20s. Our show's been really boring. They weren't even in their act Well, uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <laughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. <laughs> to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. Tonight, it's comedy shows that break the mold. But first, we just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV Cable 21. But uh, also, we want to give you our, our uh, uh, mailbox here. We're box 1515, 26, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. And uh, very important because the mailbags just keep getting bigger and bigger. Yet another piece of mail has come in. We're stunned. <laughs> and couldn't be more pleased. We, we couldn't be. But uh, here we go. Uh, this is from Jim Gillespie, for those of you scoring at home. Hey, guys and gal. Hello. How are you doing? I've been trying to find out about a TV show, but I've had no success. So I thought I'd see if you had any thoughts or ideas about it. Tell so, us about it, Mark. Okay. Some 20, 20 years ago, my wife and I both watched a TV program. We believe it was on Channel 43 out of Cleveland. Hey, that's hey. your hometown? That's right. Well, well yeah, yeah, kind of. that was my home area. Uh, where short was a Japanese import, but we can't recall the name or much of anything about it since we were so young. And other people we've asked have no recollection of it at all. All I remember is that it was about a young boy who had the aid of a giant robot which he controlled and walked very mechanically, could fly, and fired rockets from his fingers. I know there was a similar cartoon of this. Again, I believe it was Japanese, but this show was live action. Do you know what I'm talking about, or do you have any guesses? We both love the show, and if we can ever find out more about it, like the name and who produced it, 
We'd like to see if anyone else out there has videotape of it. If you have any ideas, please let us know. I wrote to Channel 43, but they weren't of any help. Well, program directors rarely are. Give, <laughs> uh, keep up the good work on the show. It's always fun. I enjoyed your Samantha Genie show, and I'll be looking for that Ted Cassidy retrospective. In the meantime, if uh, you can be of any help with the above, please let me know. Thanks. Take care, stay well, and have a good day. Peace. Jim Gillespie. Thank you, Jim. Peace. Yeah. Jim, yes, we have information for you. Well, first, the animated show is... Gigantor. With, with the, <laughs> that stirring theme. Gigantor, the space is robot. <laughs> He's a villain, but your command. But, <laughs> but no, the actual, uh, the live action show was... Johnny, Johnny Sato. Sato and his flying robots. <laughs> yes, because I remember that show too. I watched it as as a child, and uh, I feel deprived. Yes, it's you know, I didn't 43. have any of those. I, I don't know if it was on forty three or sixty one actually, but uh, I don't know who produced it to tell you the truth. But what we're going to start here on the show, and we're very excited about it, is we're going to start a uh, kind of uh, clearinghouse, clearinghouse for concepts. You know, we. Uh, if you if you've got a show and you that you can't remember the, the name of, or more importantly, if there's something you want videotapes of. Now we want to make very clear about this. This is not any commercial enterprise. We don't want any money from it. We can't take money for it. And neither can you if you've got a tape and you want to give it to somebody. This is on a trade only basis. They uh, so say if you've got something that somebody else wants and they've got something that you want will be kind of a clearing house for that wonderful thing. So it's like the dating game. We'll make connections. <laughs> Love connection. <laughs> the video connection. Video <laughs> connections. <laughs> so again, just want to tell you, uh, so if you've got any, any questions about a show, uh, we'll see what we can find out about it. Or especially if you've got some show you're trying to find videotapes of, yeah. uh, write in to Vast Wasteland, Box 15, 15, 26. Columbus, Ohio, 43215. I think I know how like Jim might have felt, because it's like, I'm sure when I was a kid that I saw a cartoon called Bat Fink. That I have absolutely no... No one in the world ever heard of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I hallucinated it. It was during the 60s. <laughs> if you remember the show, right in. you remember Bat Fink, <laughs> hey, I want to talk to you. <laughs> There's a but show I that need I can... to know, just like Jim here, needed to know that he wasn't dreaming this yes. show. <laughs> Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. There's a show that I can just kind of barely remember. It's like an early, early cartoon. Well, I can't say it's really early because they did good animation there. This one was like almost stills that they just made move, but it mm -hmm. was uh, about some guy with a, either a rocket or a plane or something, and he had a patch over one eye, and he... He wore the space helmet anyway, and he pulled a visor down, and there yeah. some guy with a beard. Weren't and you on they used to, or something then? <laughs> they, used to, they used to show it on Flippo, and I don't know what it was. This is when Flippo used to come on That's early on, in the mornings. or something. like Major Matt Mason or anything. No, 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 no. This was long years before okay, years Major before Matt, Matt Mason, because oh, okay. he was just a toy, and okay. I have all those toys. Oh, okay. This was years before that. Oh, and really? I don't know what it is. Catch <laughs> up. <laughs> I want to mention that today is the 19th. Yeah, and yeah. the show will be shown later, so right. we're not we're blowing Jim the off. Yeah, Jim, believe me, it's we the didn't lay off. Now or something That's like right. that. Now your letter right. is postmarked for the fifteenth. We received it today, the nineteenth. So. And, and it was on the air that night, so that's kind of service you're, you can expect from <laughs> Bass Wasteland. <laughs> um, anyway, but, but, two weeks later, but <laughs> well, <laughs> close enough. Anyways, on to tonight's uh, topic. Uh, 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 really, when you when you look at fifties and sixties, especially television, it was pretty much a very cookie cutter type thing. A lot of sitcoms with people living in uh, generic, uh, kind of like cut off from reality today. suburbs. Hmm? Sounds an awful lot like today. Well, yeah, in a way. <laughs> but they're trying to recreate. It's the whole nostalgia thing. Oh, man. I see. Except everybody's a single parent now. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So you had that, and the variety shows were all like pretty much reformulated vaudeville for all intents and purposes. But then some shows came uh, to came along. Now. There's one show I want to mention that's that's pre '60s and '70s, and I, re I really want to talk to you about Ernie Kovacs. Yeah. yeah. Ernie yeah. Kovacs and and the all, grandfather of them all. Yeah, because every other show we talk about tonight, you can go and find a lot of evidence in Ernie Kovacs stuff. It's rarely shown anytime. Uh, they had a thing on PBS 
I don't know, uh, way back in like the like the late seventies or early eighties. HBO had one back in the eighties. Yeah, the and whole it was special. And it was and they were great, but no one ever shows them anymore. I don't know if they have lost rights to them or it's a legal battle. Comedy Channel is supposed to, have supposed to get gotten them. some of them. Uh, his wife, Edie Adams, Edie. supposedly gave quite a few of the shows to the Comedy Channel. But you know where the com who knows where the Comedy Channel right. is going if we're ever going to see them or not. Well, isn't, isn't April first? Comedy, they're going to become comedy TV. <laughs> Supposedly, well, the, the, like, great, the great, the great, the great merge of merge comedy and channel and ha. But, but I mean, you know, a lot of the stuff that we see on Comedy Channel, we wouldn't have seen, right? Had it not been for Ernie Cove actually that's, breaking ground. That's true, and but uh, we we don't want to get into too much because it's fifties, but still, uh, it deserves I, some. Mentioning. It deserves yeah. mentioning because everybody it else, it basically worked out for him. The mm -hmm. influence was great. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to someone we've also talked, we've talked about uh, this person before, this duo before, and we want to just mention also in turn, thus Mothers Brothers. Yes, indeed. And uh, they were the really the first uh, variety show that really went out uh, since Ernie Kovacs and said, you know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, uh, we're not going to do this thing of, we're doing vaudeville bits and they no, their minds. no, yeah, no concept of reality. <laughs> and of course it was, it was just slammed down by CBS because oh it was a horrible thing we we actually gave you know they actually gave their their own uh, opinions about things and uh, CBS I, I forget the exact quote but CBS basically said <laughs> that <laughs> CBS had basically said that uh, here it comes any second now <laughs> that, CBS said <laughs> that uh, the uh, that the show should be I'm trying to remember the exact quote. Should be uh, should be irreverent, but not but uh, but not different, or something like that. <laughs> I, I, well, basically, they were. They wanted to show. Ooh, it really gives the impression yeah. of being really radical, but in reality, what they wanted to be as absolutely conservative as possible. So, had, which never worked, and the Smothers Brothers got thrown off the air because of it. And they had writers like Steve Martin and Pat Paulson, sure. and yeah. So. Uh, uh, we've, uh, we don't want to get too much into them due to the fact we've already talked about them before. So, let's, uh, let's move on to our first of our, our big four uh, shows. Uh, we're planning, this is probably going to be a two-part show, by the way, because we're just going to go on and on and on about these. We're just going to babble as usual. Well, that's, that's pretty much it. Babbling as usual. Well, let's, let's move on to our first one. Um, this was uh, certainly a, a concept of... Uh, more, I think, more technical innovation than than actual comedy material innovation. Rowan Martin's laugh in. We um, used a lot of Ernie Kovacs' sight stuff. An enormous a lot amount. Of yeah. It. Oh, sure. Sight gags left and right. Because if you're like me, of course you grew up watching Laugh In, and then years later you see a show about Ernie Kovacs. It's like he's hey. doing Laugh In. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, the, the show, the whole concept of the show was just, we're going to do really fast cuts and, uh, you know, just move. The show's going to move, and it's not going to have any real exact center. And, uh, and it's going to be hip and cool. Hip and cool and stuff. But it's going to be safe, because in reality, one of the, um, one, the, like the head writer on the show was one of Nixon's speechwriters. <laughs> <laughs> Nixon was on the show. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons he was on the show. All the weird people they yeah. had on the show. The weird John Wayne yeah. did the show. Mm -hmm. Everybody was doing the and show. Everybody who was anybody. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Did did it, and some of them got to come back. Like Sammy Davis Jr. I don't mm -hmm. know how many times he was yeah. on there doing that. Yeah. Here come the judge Here thing. Come the judge. Here come the judge. <laughs> but what's really what's really interesting is that when you, it, everybody at least then we're talking about the oh this is it cuts so fast and it's almost it's a frenetic it's so fast and you can't. You almost are overwhelmed by it, and when you watch it today, <laughs> it's leisurely. It's pretty tame, <laughs> because yeah. Because this, you know, the post MTV, you know, it's like really around 1980. There's a cutoff point. Really, if you go back and watch a commercial, say, uh, basically before 1980, you watch it and you fall asleep because there might be four cuts throughout a 30-second commercial. Now it's like. Unless there's at least 25 cuts in a 30-second commercial, it's like, come on, snap it up, let's go. Blipvert. 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 Gonna blow up our brains one day. <laughs> it, it's uh, really uh, strange that you watch this, and it's like, it's really sedate. And the trouble is, 
when you watch it today and that the technical innovation, it's like, well, it's not that innovative, and it gives you time to concentrate on the jokes that weren't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> so they, but it was a scream when, we, when it first came sure. out, and, and a lot of things from that show worked its way into Sock it to me, mm -hmm. here come the jazz. You bet your bippy. You bet your sweet bippy. Yeah. Put that, <laughs> up, that in up in your fucking wagnall. wagnall. Yeah. Beautiful a lot of those... downtown Burbank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a lot of that stuff worked its way right into our everyday language. A flying fickle finger, finger of fate. fate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you see, uh, you see yeah. a lot of, of stars coming off that show. A lot yeah. of a lot of people who became has-beens. Whoever we haven't seen Alan Sues. Basically, I think we saw him on, on uh, <laughs> I think he was on, what was, uh, was on Hollywood thing? Squares or something. He was bitter right. and twisted. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was kind of on Hollywood Squares. What we got here? We got Dan Rowan, Dick Martin, Gary Owens, Goldie Hawn, Artie Johnson, Judy Carn, Ruth Buzzy, Joanne Worley, Alan Seuss, Lily Tomlin, Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim, what about him? <laughs> Henry Gibson, Pig Meat Markham. There's a name you don't Pig hear too much Markham. of anymore. Go to hold Dave Madden <laughs> and a host of others. A host of others. And Chelsea the only Brown, four, Johnny... What was his name? Yeah, Johnny Brown. Johnny Brown, Chelsea Brown. Brown Chelsea Brown. Um, uh, 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 what's her name? Went on to go and do uh, Get Christy Love. What is her? What was Teresa Graves. Teresa Graves. Yeah, she was yeah. on yeah. there. Uh, and, uh, Judy Carn. did you mention Judy Yeah, Judy Carn, who was... At the time, married to Burt Reynolds? Yeah, and she went through a whole real bitter yeah. divorce thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she got real fed up with the show, too. They'd splash water on her, throw pies and things at her. She went berserk she went for a while door. there. I think she went crazy for and, a while and, too. And, and because and for years after that, she would not I mean, she go out in public. Thing. She go out in public. And people just like throw water at her and stuff. Yeah, that I was. Mean, just, like, <laughs> she thinks it's like like she wanted them to do it or That's something. for yourself, image. Yeah. But <laughs> Goldie uh, Hawn really took off on the show. If you remember, Goldie Hawn was the. Well, she was one of the dancers a lot. Yeah, and she was like the airheaded right. child blonde. Right. <laughs> but what, from what I read about it, they actually, they, that it, kind of, it, it became such a running joke that she screwed up her lines was, is is that they mix up words on the cue cards and put like, and put obscene words on the cue cards to make her laugh. Yeah. And to the point that she got, she also got fed up with it and left the show. In fact, the only two, the only four people that stayed on the show from beginning to end were Rowan and Martin, Gary Owens, and Ruth Buzzy. Well, no, I don't. No, Artie, no, Artie I, this Johnson. Is fact. Are you sure? It's a fact. Those are the only four. I have really? it. I have it in one of my books. It's a fact. Those are the only four who stayed the entire the Everyone entire time. Everyone else went on to game show fame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't Matt Jones do that up for a while? And, and Margo as the friendly drone. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he go on to do some other? Uh, He's always the announcer, announcer on anything. For <laughs> yeah, or anything. Him and Mr. Radio he Voice. He and no Burgess Meredith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and even Dave Nothing. Madden. Dave Madden's doing a lot of commercials mm -hmm. these days. Mm -hmm. you can't turn on a TV without hearing that Dave Madden. Like Artie Johnson's made it pretty much in the movie. Yeah, Henry Gibson, too. Yeah, He's Henry Gibson. Well, Artie Johnson went Bruce on to Brothers. do a lot, a lot of love boats. <laughs> a lot of love boats. <laughs> well, who didn't off of this yeah. cast? Huh? Yeah. Good, Good evening. evening. That was the other one. Good evening. Yeah. Well, the little German well, guy. Yeah. There with, the, with the smoke there. <laughs> Tyrone F. Horn I and Gladys, whatever her How about name. a <laughs> Would you call my number? <laughs> Would you? What did she have in a handbag? Let me call your number. Boom. Has it been documented? What's in the handbag? She Would hit you? him in the head. Call me an ambulance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what a great show. And if you never saw it, well, all these things are just lost on you. Right. <laughs> Who rode the tricycle? Remember, there was always a person um, in a big yellow raincoat uh, riding a tricycle. Alan Seuss rode it for a while. Then there was another Johnson, guy. Artie Johnson, I thought, rode it at some that point. That was a bigger person than Artie Johnson. That was oh, some other. What was his? Oh. Oh, who, God, I can't even remember his name. Know. He was a tall guy. Larry Helvis. He did the show for a while. Um, maybe we it was. Know. It was somebody. We don't know. We don't know. It was somebody. <laughs> that was one of the camera people saying Artie Johnson. They that they they're know. convinced it's Artie. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. The um, Let's see, we had uh, basically a show, again, that, that, that didn't have a lot of really funny stuff in it. And uh, just because they, they really expected a lot of the attention to be, oh, this is really fast, you know. <laughs> 
And uh, today, they showed uh, a couple years ago, they, they tried it on Nick and Knight, and it died. I mean, even in an edited form where they took out even the, you know, so it was even faster and faster and faster. It's I was still the joke wall was neat. Of course, I'm watching the show in what, 60... Well, it came out in 68. Yeah, eight. And went on to 73. Until about 73. I'm yeah. eight right? years old. I think this show is hilarious. Sure. Anything I don't understand, I figure is dirty. <laughs> right, well. Yeah. That whole Walnetto thing just took off. I remember oh, yeah. getting Walnetto ice cream after a while at Baskin <laughs> Robbins or Bressler's, one of those. It was it was just a wild thing and Funkin' Wagnalls. I had never heard of Funkin' Wagnalls before then. It was only Webster's or somebody else. Right. And here's Funkin', Funkin Wagnalls, Wagnalls suddenly, and they just took off. I'm sure they they just sold a bunch of books after that. <laughs> sure. And then uh, of course afterwards in the mid '70s, about '77, '78, somewhere in there, George Slatter said. We're gonna redo laughing now, uh -huh. mm. and it was like a, a more up to date, and it was more of a it was kind of a disco attitude because that was your your and they big had disco one era. One very outstanding, very outstanding, talent. who was only a year from ultra super stardom, and that was Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. It was like this unknown he actor. Blew me away. Oh yeah. Because he was doing the act he did a year later yeah. on Mork and Mindy. Yeah, he was doing all the voices, <laughs> all these incredible voices, and all, all this the fast. Yeah. But the rest of the show really was bad, so they, <laughs> boom, you're done. Very bad. <laughs> bad, bad TV. Bad. <laughs> well, that's, so what else do you have on uh, laughing? Let's see here. Um, I think we pretty much covered the whole darn yep. thing here, just about. Unless we've got a, nope, nope, that's nope, that'll do it. With some, that's uh, the whole thing. <laughs> some of the big flowers. Henry yep. Gibson would come mm -hmm. out with the huge flower, big flowers. Neon colors aren't Up new. Home. Right. By Henry they Gibson. Were all laughing. <laughs> Dogs are better than ants because they don't get in your hats. Dogs are better than ants because they don't get in your pants. But most of all, dogs don't get in your jelly jars. By Henry Susan. <laughs> <laughs> by Henry Gibson. Thank you. And of course, for Alan Susie he did Uncle Al, the kitty's pal. Mm -hmm. Uncle Al. He had to get the permission. Kitty's pal. Uh, he had hello, to get permission Uncle from Al, Uncle Al hello. in Cincinnati. Huh. There was an actual Uncle Al. He's still in Cincinnati, I think. Mm, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It always was. <laughs> yeah, and it, wasn't he kind of like Captain Lucky? Or <laughs> no, it wasn't like Captain Lucky. I got Captain Lucky. <laughs> no, but uh, he had to get permission from Uncle Al in Cincinnati to do that bit. And it's a wonder that he got the permission that he did. <laughs> well, so uh, we have anything? I guess we're going to move on to the next one. Certainly, uh, an absolute landmark and one of my all-time favorite television uh, and certain uh, television shows and my ultimate favorite comedy team of all time, uh, Monty Python. And Monty Python's Flying Circus. Uh, show that... Uh, Which is still funny. Oh, yeah. And, and the difference, really, you can look at the difference between Laugh-In and Python. The difference is that... The, Laughin was doing jokes about something that happened that week mm -hmm. <laughs> or something that happened that month. And Python, you rarely see anything of like really current events. 98% of what you see is like poking fun at the establishment. Mm -hmm. And the establishment always was there and always is going to be there. It may change slightly, but it's always basically the same. And so, and so it, it's timeless. And a lot of historical lot of things history. also. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's a nice thing about um, those British shows. They, they do a lot of historical things. They have a lot but of But this one poked fun at everything. <laughs> yeah. And they had full frontal nudity. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Which Rarely. Uh, it was interesting. I saw on, um, when, they, when they showed them on PBS, which was like mid-70s, they actually showed the frontal nudity. Yes. I remember mm -hmm. that quite distinctly, especially at that age. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when they showed them on... Uh, I, w I saw the one about the, I'm trying to remember the name of the sketch, uh, The Life of a Stockbroker. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, this sketch where this woman, wow, this uh, <laughs> sketch where this guy is going through a normal life and, uh, and it, what his normal life is, is he doesn't even realize it's happening around him, is these extraordinary events is coming out. He's just he, walking around, he walks reading around, the he, newspaper. Yeah. And stuff is happening all over. There's like he, he people shooting back and forth. He, he, he sits down. He, he's standing at the bus stop in a line of people. And Frankenstein is behind him. It's John Cleese doing Frankenstein. And he is just slamming people out of the way and killing them. 
and this guy is at the front of the line. He's going through the back of the line. Wham, wham. And just as he gets to the sock broker, the bus shows up, and, and the guy gets on. <laughs> and Frankenstein goes, yeah. and, and the guy gets on the bus, and it's like all troops. Other than him, it's like all troops on, the, on this. And they get out, and there's this war going on. <laughs> and he's just walking calmly through this. And he gets to his office, and there's uh, two people making love on his desk. And there's a woman's uh, or a guy's feet uh, uh, swinging back and forth. He's hung himself. Mm -hmm. Another guy, like, stabbed to death in the back. <laughs> and when he, when he goes to buy the newspaper, here's uh, right. one that Carol Cleveland standing right. back there was. Well, she's standing there topless. He just topless. buys the newspaper and doesn't even look at her. He just puts down his money, picks up the paper, and goes. And but, she's uh, just but, I, but the point is, what I was <laughs> get back to the point. On Comedy Channel, when they showed him, and I think on MTV when they showed him, they did the little digital effects so you couldn't really see it. <laughs> they did the little <laughs> pixelization thing. Get us back thing. here! Get us back here! It's kind of obvious, but. <laughs> We'll and of course, at the end of the sketch, uh, and uh, actually a, a rarity, an end of a Python sketch, <laughs> the guy sits down at his desk, looks around, again, not noticing anything's happening around him, to see if no one's around, and then slips a comic book out of his... That's <laughs> this full yeah. adventure yeah, like stories. Yeah, adventure stuff. <laughs> and he's like, Ooh. And it just goes on into something else. And it's just, it's just and, and that's truly really, great. And that's really a, a, a prime example of yeah, Python. A very typical Python-esque right. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. where Some uh, mostly... A kind of combination of on location and uh, stuff in the studio. In studio things, right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody who does that here. And they're just <laughs> <laughs> well, Except this was silly and it was also funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the big things that Python did was that they, they brought up the concept of, hey, I've got a funny punchline, but I don't want to have to set up the big the thing for it and, and build up to it. I just want to do the punchline. The punchline's funny on its own. Mm -hmm. So they would just say, well, forget all the setup. We'll do the punchline, or we'll do a setup that's funny that we don't have a punchline for. We'll just do the setup and go on to another sketch. <laughs> the whole concept of beginning, middle, and end of sketch is thrown out. Right. Mm -hmm. To be, and the whole thing is weaved together using uh, Terry Gilliam's animation. Animation, exactly. Just yeah. phenomenal animation. Oh, yeah. It's just, and um, it's really, I mean, stuff. Yeah, and, and most of it's stuff uh, that's it's a it's a cutout type animation yeah. for those of you who live in a cave. I and like haven't look seen at it. it and I'm like, <laughs> gee, that'd be fun to do. <laughs> or I look at it and say, gee, I could do that. And, uh, How? <laughs> I, I, I saw Gilliam talking about it one time. He said every time when he was doing the show, every time he ran out of ideas, he'd run to a museum of modern art in the <laughs> London area and go, I'll take something from that, and then he'd go buy some art books <laughs> and just gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and he showed this one painting, his famous, I can't remember the name of the painting, and uh, showed this, this enormous, all this stuff going on, this Renaissance painting. In the very corner, there is the foot that you see crushing people. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and he really talked about the fact that it was like, tele, that this is what television does. It takes great works of art and, and chops them down into this little thing that has no significance whatsoever. <laughs> And they always <laughs> considered um, Terry Gilliam to be the um, the the what the American. Well, yeah, he was. Because yeah. he's from Canada. Well, right. That's, well, <laughs> oh, gee, just, we're interchangeable with Canadians, aren't yeah. we? <laughs> well, as far as the British are concerned, well, <laughs> they're just over there. <laughs> Seems uh, that we're running out of time. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're stunned so we'll that we've managed. End to, part one here and, and part pick one up it, part two. And we'll do more Python. We'll go into SNL. We're we'll going to SCTV. I don't know. We we're gonna have to hurry to get this done in two episodes. Boy, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I'll just make it a whole damn season. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, anyways, so uh, again, we want to tell you real quick. Bo it's box fifteen, fifteen, twenty-six, Columbus, Ohio, four three two one five. We're on Tuesdays at six, Wednesdays at ten, Thursdays at three. On S on on that SCTV. On SCTV. <laughs> so now, Nancy, um, you and your father, if you really want, write a letter. That's that's how to do it. Write a letter. <laughs> so, we'll see you next time. Right. Get out of here, Good night. Wait for it. Dimsdale. <laughs> <laughs>